Hello everyone and welcome back to Bitwig Studio and Music Production. This is lesson 2.06. In this lesson we're going to be looking at stretching more of a club based track, so something that's arranged with a longer build up and a longer breakdown and generally is something you'd hear DJs mixing in and mixing out of uh, in a very traditional way. So if you have no idea what any of those things I just said mean, that's okay. We're going to be covering that in a future lesson. But for now, let's just jump into stretching this track that I've selected. First thing I have to do is grab my track, and we've already covered this a number of times. Open up the browser panel. I've already pulled it in here and dropped it in my music folder, and now I'm just going to drop it in. I'll zoom myself out, and let's put it back to the one. All right, so let's just take a listen and see what this sounds like right now. Okay, so obviously that's not the original BPM of the track, and if you remember from the last video, the first thing we want to do is figure out the actual BPM of this song, and then we'll change our global BPM here and make sure that in the inspector for our audio event, we sync those numbers up. So right now, it's calculated to be 119.98. I've calculated it, I calculated it out to be 120. My guess is this track was made at 120. Not too many people are making music at 119.98. So let's just go ahead and change this to 120, and we'll set our global BPM up here to 120 as well. And what you might have noticed this time is that it actually changed our audio event length. Sometimes it seems to do that, sometimes it doesn't. I'm not really sure why it does or doesn't, but just be aware that if you were to zoom out like in our last example and we're missing half of the track, you're gonna have to change this audio event length to, to make sure that you're getting your entire track in this clip here. Okay, so I'm gonna change this to Stretch HD again. I seem to think it sounds a little bit better in Stretch HD, but it will depend on your source material. So now let's play it back with the um, metronome and see what we got. Let's go ahead to where the uh, drums are playing in. All right, so we're very, very close, but it's not perfect. So we can do some things to actually get this so we're hitting right on the beat. So that click is gonna come exactly at the same time as we're hearing our kick drum. In this track, I'm going to approach it a little bit differently because if you notice at the very beginning, there's not really a kick drum, there's some percussion, but there's nothing to me that's screaming, this is the downbeat of the track. But if I go a little bit further, there we go. All right, that's our kick and that sounds like it's pretty constant. And my guess is, at least on those ones, so when we're counting one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, in most tracks, not all tracks, but most tracks, the one is going to hit right on the grid. There might be some slight variations in other hits, but the one is usually gonna line up exactly. So if I click my audio event and I click the E button, it's gonna bring up our event editor tab here. And I can zoom in here on the 33, and in this case, I'm just gonna grab like, Let's see. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one. Maybe let's use this 36 over here as the example. So we can see that we're not right on the grid. And so we're going to have to fix that and stretch it and pull it over. So I'm gonna turn off my snap to grid functions here so I can zoom in real close and I'm going to double click right where I see this peak. That's indicating to me the boom of the kick drum. So I'll double click. I got it. Now you have to make sure before you start dragging that you actually click your stretch marker. So it's going to turn light blue here and you can see that we have a little bit of information. Now I can zoom out and I'm going to stretch it and I'm going to pull it back to the 36 one. In this case, you might want to put these snap functions back on so you can just snap it right in. Now, if I play back from this point, let's take a listen with the metronome. All right, so we're sounding really, really good. But we have to remember that by default, 
there is a stretch marker that's put in and it indicates the start of the audio event. And in this case, it's just the start of the file. So we need to kind of go in and fix it. And here's where there's gonna be a little bit of trial and error and you're not gonna be able to maybe get this on your very first try, but that's okay. The logic always remains the same. We wanna keep the track on beat from start to end, especially if we're in a very traditional DJ type situation. So let's zoom into the start here and see what we've got. Aha. All right, so we've got some space. And what I think I want is I'm gonna use this marker here. I'm gonna use this as my guide to see, can I pull this back and get it close to this 1.13? That's what I'm gonna to wanna to do. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm just gonna kind of, I don't know, let's pick right here for an example. We might have to do this again. I've created my stretch marker. And now what I'm gonna do is this one is I'm going to set the start of the audio event right here. So I'll click start audio event here. The reason I'm not gonna do that at the other one I made is because by default, when you do this, it's just gonna delete our space at the beginning. So I click start audio event here. You see that's exactly what happened. And now I'm gonna pull it back and I'm going to see, will this hit fall closer to this 1.13 mark? And it has, and it's not 100% perfect. So if it was me and I'm a stickler for this, let's see, do I need, so I need to actually cut out a little bit more room. So I'm gonna undo, I'm gonna zoom in pretty close here, turn off my snapping functions. And again, I'm just gonna kind of pick a point. I'll start the audio event from here now. And I don't want you anymore. And now let's see if I pull it back, if I get a little bit closer. All right, so we're maybe a little bit closer. We're not perfect. What I could do if I wanted to be a little bit more of a perfectionist is I could take the start of the hit here. I could double click it, enable it. I could pull it back. But what that's actually going to do is because we have two stretch markers so close together, it might throw off the sound of this first hit. Let's just take a listen and see what that's done. Well, that actually sounds okay, so we'll leave it like this for now. And let's just take a listen and see what we've got going on. So we may not be sounding perfect again, and that's because we've put another stretch marker in at the beginning, and so what that's done is it's actually pushed all of our audio back, right? Because stretch markers, they only impact up until the next stretch marker. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this back to 36.1, and now what it should have done is it should sync everything up like we want it to be. So let's take a listen back through, and then I'm gonna see if we need to make any more adjustments down the road. So let's listen from the very beginning with our tempo and our metronome going. Sounds good to me. You can hear those bass stabs are lining up great with the metronome. up pretty much the whole way. I might take this one here towards the end of the track and pull it back. And again, since there's such a big space between this stretch marker and our previous one, which is around bar 33, the move is going to be so, so subtle for the majority of the audio event that it's only going to tighten things up. So let's go ahead and 
put one here. That looks like that's the start of the kick. And I'll drag it back. What I've just done there is I've created a little bit of a loop just to check it to make sure it sounds pretty good. And it sounds good to me. Obviously you can check at different points along the track, but I think we're pretty much good to go with this song. And like I showed you in the last video, you could have a second project open and that could be your actual set and this would just be your place to prep and then you could drag it, you could drop it somewhere else. Um, the last thing I want to cover is the different modes of processing that Bitwig will do. So if I select raw here, it's going to play back our file completely raw, like at its original tempo. Um, and no matter what I do with, let's play it back. No matter what I do with our BPM up here, it's gonna keep playing back the same. All right, so obviously I'm changing the BPM, but it's just playing back normally. So that's not gonna be very helpful for us like in a live situation where we need to have two tracks going at exactly the same BPM so that they'll blend together nicely. If I go and I change the mode to repitch, it is important that you do still set your stretch markers in repitch because you'll get the same effect without doing it, but this will keep everything on the beat. So let's take a listen to what happens when we use repitch. So obviously as we drop the BPM, we're lowering the pitch, and if we raise the BPM past its original point, we'll be raising the pitch. And so you might wonder, when would I use repitch when I have the ability to use these like stretch HD modes? And the reason you would use the repitch a lot of times is if you're making like a crazy jump. So this track is at 120, but at 140, it doesn't sound too bad in repitch and you can use it more as like an effect. It's a cliche effect, it's been done a lot of times, but the repitch algorithm is gonna sound a lot more natural than using like the stretch or the stretch HD when we push it out of control. So let's just listen to what the stretch HD sounds like at 140. Let's even push it up higher. Let's push it up 150. Now let's change it to repitch. In this case, I'd say Bitwig has done a really good job with their algorithms in other programs when you do that um, with the like stretching modes like the HD modes like that a lot of times it sounds really terrible but that actually sounded like it was working pretty good just a matter of personal taste and preference I would probably if I was really cranking it for whatever reason I would probably use repitch but anything within 10 or so BPM of the original I would most likely use the stretch modes and the stretch modes what they're going to do is they're going to keep the regular pitch of your track but only changing the BPM so if I click play and I change this, it should be keeping our pitch the same. I'm trying to do its best with that. All right, that should all be cool. I hope this has helped you guys out. This is the way I've gone about stretching this track. There are a number of different ways, but as long as you think about it logically and that you wanna keep your downbeats, you wanna keep your one hits right on the bar, you should be good to go and you should be able to insert stretch markers wherever you feel it's necessary and pull things back to keep them on the beat. So thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you again in the next lesson.